what I'd like to talk about in this video is how to make resistance measurements with your meter. So I've collected various things from the supply kit. You can watch a previous video here that talks about what these supplies are. We're just going to measure the resistance of them using our meter. And the way I have it connected is I have the black lead of the meter going into the common. That's pretty standard. Common. Black is common. And then I have the red lead here going into the other lead that has the ohm symbol on it here. Because just remember that resistance here has this symbol omega here. So whenever I see omega, that means resistance. So I want to make sure the meter is set right. So it looks like the jacks are in the right position. But again, that's just not enough for the meter because it measures resistance, voltage, and current. So I need to make sure I turn this knob to the right setting. Looks like the last person that used this had it on the 20 DC volt scale, and I'm just not measuring voltage. So if I went ahead and touched the leads to these various devices on the DC volt scale, expecting a resistance, I wouldn't get it. So I have to make sure I set this to the right scale. So I'll go down here to the ohm setting right here, and I really have no idea where to set it, so I'll just put it down there on the 2000 ohm scale. And the way I have it connected, just for the sake of illustration here, is I actually just have the leads coming out, and I have the, the pointed end just sort of taped to the board here, and I have these really convenient clip leads sort of connected to the red and the black here. Um, it just sort of makes for easier measurements here. That way the other ends I can just clip on things. Whatever I clip onto here, I'll get the resistance of it, so it's kind of convenient here. Let's just go ahead and see what we get then. So I have the leads connected. Let me go ahead and turn the meter on and see I'm getting essentially one. One O's means the meter is overloaded because technically what it's doing now is measuring the resistance in the air between the two leads, and that's going to be a very high resistance, so more than the meter can measure. But one good test to make sure you're all ready to go is just to connect the two leads together directly, like this. And whenever you do this with a meter, you should always get a very low resistance because there's really nothing but straight wire between the two leads, and that often has a very low resistance. So it looks like about 2 ohms, or if I click it down to the 200, the more sensitive scale, I get about 1.6 ohms, 1.5. And that's very common for just wires, and that might very well be the lowest resistance setting of the meter. So I'll go back to the 2000 ohm scale. So that's just a good way of checking. You should get a very low resistance when you connect the leads directly together with the meter here. Okay, so let's just start out with a couple of resistors here. I'll start out with this one right here, which has the color bands brown, green, red. And you can watch the other video or look up on the internet what it's supposed to be. Let's see what the meter gives us. So I'll just clip one on like this, one on like this, and I'm getting about 1,462 ohms. So you can sort of decode that right here. Um, I know that brown is 1 and green is 6. This would be about 1,600 ohms, but the resistance of these are always good within 10%, so about 1,400 ohms is just fine there. I'll do this one next here. This one has the color bands brown, black, brown. Again, just connect to the leads here. In any direction is fine. Let's see what we get. We get about 99 ohms here. Let me click it down to the more sensitive scale to get to see the resolution. About 98.4 ohms, so right around 100. Very consistent, what it should be. Sort of put that back over here. How about this one here? Here's another resistor here that has resistance bands of orange, black, and red. Orange, black, red, let's put it on here. And it looks like I'm getting one. And one means I've overloaded the meter, so that means I better click it up a scale. Go to the 20,000. So about 2.95 thousand ohms, or about 3,000 ohm resistor here. So that's, that's good there. Okay, and lastly, do I'll just sort of do this resistor here that has the color bands red, red, and red on it here. Red, red, red. There we go. And here we go. What am I getting? About 2.1 thousand ohms. So about a 2200 ohm resistor. And I remember that red is 2 all the way across. So it's 22 times 10 to the 2, which is about 2200 ohms. So the meter is right on there. There you go. Some basic resistor measurements of those resistors, which again have fixed resistances here. The next device I'll sort of grab here is this little blue thing. This is our thermistor. And remember we said in an earlier video it has a resistance that depends on temperature. Kind of interesting. So I'll just go ahead and connect that to the, the meter here like this and see what I get. So right off here at room temperature, it's uh, somewhat warm in the room I'm in right now. I'm getting about 7.4 or 7.5 thousand ohms because it's on the 20K scale. So all these are meant to be thousands here. It's about 7,000 ohms, 7,600 ohms on a 20,000 ohm scale. And if I pinch the thing like this, just pinch it. Remember the resistance is supposed to depend on temperature. So if I pinch it and heat it up, because of my hands, see the resistance is going down. 6.9, 6.8. And if I let go again, let it heat back up to room temperature, it should come back up again, and it is. So I just happen to have, let's put it through a few extremes here. I just happen to have uh, some ice cubes here. I knew I was going to be doing this for some ice for you right here. Uh, let's see what there is, what happened to the resistance of this if I dunk it in the ice or touch it in there with zero degrees. So you see the resistance is really going up a lot. There's almost 10,000, 12,000. So you see 
as the material cools, the resistance goes up. I've even overloaded the meter. So let me click up to the 200,000 ohm scale to see what it does. So it's going to clear up into the 27,000 ohms when it's as cold as ice, maybe some ice water, even the 30,000 ohms it's about to hit. So there you go. And of course, if I take it back out of the ice again, the resistance starts to drop because it's going to start heating up again. So these things are kind of peculiar. The resistance goes up when they're cooled and goes down when they're hot. And just, just for fun to do one more, let's just see if we can put a match near one of these things here to see how hard, uh, hot we can get it. So I have a match here. What we'll do is just sort of hold the match. So we're going to get the match lit here. Actually having trouble lighting. There we go. Lighting the match. So here we go. Let's just hold that near the thermistor here. Get some heat on it here. And see the resistance starts to go down some more. 11.2, 10.4. I don't want to hold it too close to the resistor. I might start melting it itself, but see, I'm getting it way down to about 6,000 ohms or so. And that's just the behavior that we expect as it get hot, the resistor goes down right there. So there you go. Lots of fun, and you can see how these was interfaced properly to a circuit, then all sorts of things could happen. So that's the thermistor. Resistance seems to go up when it gets cold, down when it gets hot. Here's one of these potentiometers, which in that earlier video I said changes the resistance when you turn the knob. Let's go ahead and connect to that and see what we get. So I'll connect this, uh, there's always three leads on these, and we'll investigate what those mean um, in a minute. So I'll connect it to one outer lead and another one on this lead right here. So there we go, we're all connected. And it looks like I'm getting 0.9, but I'm on that big scale because of the mystery. Let me turn it down a bit here, even more. There we go, about 9,000 ohms, 9,017 ohms. And if I turn the knob, uh-oh, nothing seems to be happening. Well, I expected that because the way these potentiometers work, variable resistors that depend on how much the knobs have been turned, the total resistance of the potentiometer always appears fixed across any of the outer two leads, the outer ones. So we know this is about a 900 or probably a 1,000 ohm potentiometer. And you see the resistance right there doesn't change. But if I take one of these leads and connect it to the always on one of the middle ones and one of the outer ones, something like this. So I'm still back at that big resistance. But now if I turn the knob, see the connection is different now, right? If I turn the knob now, see now the resistance is changing. So there's down, I'm down like 5 ohms. Turn it up, there's about 300, down to about 125, and then turn it the other way, all the way back to about 800, 900 again. So see, the resistance does change as I turn the knob, but not across the outer ones. That's always fixed by design. Only across the inner one and either of the outer ones. And as you might guess, if this is 700 ohms across these two, if I take this green one off and move it on the outer one over here, I'll get about the 300 ohms in there, because it always has to be 900 across all of them. So you see that one pair always has one resistance, and the other pair is the full resistance minus the resistance across that initial pair. So potentiometer is very nice. The resistance turn changes with angle. Okay, This is one of my favorites in the box right here. This is the photoresistor. Its resistance changes with light intensity. So I'll just go ahead and connect that up to my hook leads here. And there's a lot of things we can do with, do with this. Uh, so it's sort of it's doing fine, about 500. Let me just cover it now, not let any light hit it at all if I cover it. See, the resistance is going very high, up to about 1,500 ohms or so. And if I, of course, I let it out again, the, the room lights are starting to let it go in about 400. If I really blast it with this little flashlight that I have right here, just put it right on there, see the resistance goes way down to about 160 ohms. Here's a, there's a flashlight on, off, on, off, on. See, so it really does sort of depend on how much light is hitting it. If I just sort of wave my hand in front of it like this, with the room lights in it, you can see that the resistance changes. So it really is something that depends on how much light is hitting the surface here. So all kinds of things like burglar alarms and light sensors and all sorts of things can be made of those because we can sense the amount of light that happens to be coming in. We'll just do a couple more things here to wrap up the video. This is that little microphone here. And I sort of said in an earlier video that its resistance changes with the amount of sound that hits it. So if I sort of connect the lead to the end of this microphone here, now it's about 1600 ohms. Let me make a loud sound. Hello. See, the resistance jumped up a little bit. Hello. Goodbye. So as I'm making these sounds, we see the resistance changes. I'll just sort of hold this near my mouth and I'll talk as, as you can watch the meter here. So as I talk, you can see the resistance of this microphone seems to change. And that's typical of microphones and that's what they do. So if I clap, it can get a bit of resistance change. Well, not very much. Maybe the meter isn't fast enough. But anyway, you can see the microphone here, its internal resistance is changing with sound intensity. Uh, last two things we'll measure here is the light bulb. So you don't have to turn a light bulb on. You can go ahead and measure the resistance all the way across the film by just extruding the hook clips here and touching the ends of the light bulb right there. 
getting a very small, about three or four ohms. I'll go down to the 200 ohm setting right here, and I'll get something like about about two and a half ohms, two ohms or so. So the, the resistance of the filament of the light bulb is often very small, so it draws a lot of current and gets nice and bright when you turn it on. Turn it on. The last thing I'll measure then is resistance of my skin, because the human body has certain sweat and moisture and oils on the skin. It has resistance as well. I'll just do that by just pinching the leads between my two fingers directly. So looks like I'm maxing out the meter right there. Let me turn it maybe the 20,000 ohm scale right here. Still maxing out the meter. Go up to 200,000 ohm scale. Still maxing out the meter. Go even higher and push it. And there we go. So I'm finally getting a measurement. I'm getting about 1,200 ohms. Well, actually on the wrong scale. This is the 200,000 kilo ohm scale here. So I'm getting a resistance across my body here of about 1,400 thousand ohms, almost 1 1.4 mega ohms. So see, the resistance between my two hands through the skin that connects my two hands all the way across my chest and my arms is over a million ohms. And so see, the human body has resistance as well. You can try a lot of things. You can try a cup of distilled water and tap water. You should get some differences. You can try your skin again when you're sweaty and when you're not sweaty. All kinds of things have resistance. And that's what this meter allows us to do in resistance measurements mode.